will be speaking about the magic behind Pixar. I personally am really inspired by Pixar, although I can't draw for the love of my life, but I do love the animation. So I'll start off by telling you about Ratatouille, Remy. So I don't know if you're familiar with the story of Ratatouille, it's about a rat named Remy and he dreams of becoming a chef. And through this, he gets into a kitchen and he meets Linguini, Linguini, which is a chef in this kitchen. He's fairly new, so he becomes friends with this rat. And the purpose of this is because he says something to Linguini that really sticks with me. So the only thing predictable in life is, um, is its unpredictability. So Pixar really does show this. Um, you're never really able to predict what they will do next. So this quote really relates to Pixar. Pixar has won, I think, about 10 um, Oscars and has been nominated for 21 of them. Uh, so learning about the magic behind Pixar will help us to better understand how, um, how we as the audience can be captivated by them. So then now we'll begin to talk about the history about um, Pixar and how it started and how it's founded. And then I'll go into how Disney collaborated with Pixar. After that, I'll explain um, the characters and how they come to life in Pixar films. And lastly, I'll, I'll introduce, sorry. Oh, I'll also, I'll introduce how the audience attracted to it. So the Lucas Computer Division actually started in 1979. This is how it started at first with George Lucas. George Lucas' goal was to create digital, um, digital computerized um, technology. But back at this time, they had the state of art um, technology for film. So then in 1986, Steve Jobs meets with um, the Lucasfilm Computer Division and renames Lucasfilm Computer Division to Pixar. So once they collaborated, they came um, to produce the Red Stream. So this was their first animated um, movie. And well, it's actually a short clip. And with this, help them really see what they can do. All right. So then in 1991, Pixar collaborated with Disney. And with that came Toy Story, which was huge. And then in 1994, after Toy Story came to be, Pixar started to expand. And they needed more people to come and collaborate through art and loads of stuff. So according to Steve Jobs, CEO of Apple and founder of Pixar as we know now, great things in business are never done by one person but by a group of a team. A group, a group, yeah, as a team. <laughs> so with a team being um, people that work through animation and also being with people that work through instruments help movies like this come to life. So now I'm gonna get into the drawings and the sketches behind Pixar. So as we see on this, this is actually my favorite short film. Um, it's called Feast. It's the best film. <laughs> it's about a puppy and how he enjoys eating everyone's leftovers. So over here we see these oval shapes. So right here the artist is trying to get the right side of, um, <coughs> I'm sorry, of, Win of Winston. Liz Winston. <laughs> and so he creates these ovals so he could help shape the body. Later on throughout the sketch, he creates his paws and eyes and ears and collar to create an image of a dog. So without drawing boards, um, artists wouldn't be able to sketch out Winston or any other um, character for that matter. So drawing boards are really important in animation. Um, once drawing boards came to be, then um, CGI is introduced, which is computer generated imagery. So as we see here, the dog is able to move its mouth, take out its tongue and move its paw. So it's able to react to any action it's moving. I don't know if I can put it there, oh, there you go. As you can see, 
with this gif, you, I don't know if you saw them like pulling on the pizza and everything. You can see how this imagery is able to do that. All right. Now I'm gonna talk about color and sound and also how this is important to all the animations. So color is very important because the brightness, is it attracts our eyes. And according to an article in the UX Matter website, last updated in October 3, primarily colors and high contrast in graphics layouts evoke um, exploration. So this is really good for kids to watch because they're just really amazed by the color. And then as you see Wally down here, uh, this one I was trying to portray to sound because in the movie Wally, you don't really hear talking. Also, you hear him banging on stuff and moving his um, his binoculars, which are his eyes, and that's really important in um, this film because that's what made Wally. All right. So then, lastly, I'm gonna explain how you can add your own story into their films. So Pixar does set a love story for you, but honestly, you could um, portray anything of it. As me, I love this Pixar film, um, Inside Out. I compare myself to sadness and um, this guy getting nervous because honestly, this is how I am when I'm in school. But my boyfriend's always proud and happy and it kind of overpowers me and I'm like, uh. <laughs> and my mom's always angry. And that's the only personality I'll ever give her. <laughs> but I love her. But um, I like this because I'm able to portray myself through them. And what I got from this movie is that without all these emotions, we really, we really wouldn't be able to know what happiness is or sadness. So you, either one of them, they lay on each other. So now that we know how we can add and reflect and review on the magic behind Pixar, we are able to see how Pixar came to be. Thank you. Thank you.